and this time by about half a percentage point or 38 cents to 73.69. It's been a long way down from the $93 threshold that the commodity reached in late September. The price of a barrel of crude currently sits, as you can see, at just over 73. Our next guest says prices will likely stay below 80 US dollars a barrel towards the early part of next year. Let's bring in that guest. He's Reed Lanson, senior commodity analyst for Kepler. Uh, Reed, thank you a great deal for joining us. What has, got, what has happened to the price of crude oil? It seemed to, uh, uh, in a, and it did gather a very significant head of steam in the late uh, fall, reaching 93 US dollars per barrel, and it's been all downhill since then. What's going, what's going on? Yeah, it's important to keep in mind that through the summer period, balances across the oil market were very negative. This was driven by a number of factors, weakness in exports out of Russia and Saudi Arabia were the main drivers. But keep in mind that um, coming into late August and September, we started to make a call that the price would really start to sell off. We did see that in early October. There was some upside volatility following the issues in Israel. But in general, we continue to maintain a pretty bearish stance, just given the fact that heading into early next year, global oil balances are going to be very positive even with the announcements around additional OPEC cuts. Sure. Hi, Reid. Uh, question about the, is there a possible that there's a lower price on oil that would make production start to come down or there'd be shut-ins uh, that could rectify this aside from, uh, you know, OPEC cutting production? It depends on the region you're talking about. If you're looking at the shale patch, for example, I think you really start to see struggles or, uh, you know, under the $60 per barrel level, uh, level on WTI. We're not there yet. I think the $80 per barrel level, you know, on Brent is kind of the sweet spot. And the market's liking uh, trading around this level right now. I think Saudi is okay with an $80 per barrel um, uh, level for, for oil right now as well. And so I think that the, the thing to watch moving forward is do we see prices um, move significantly under this 75 to 80 dollar price range. Our opinion right now is that we're going to kind of sit in this range for a while. Um, again, coming into Q4, we saw prices really, uh, you know, we expected prices were going to sell off. That sell off has come a little quicker than we were expecting. But I think this 75 to 80 dollar range looks reasonable right now. What did OP did OPEC Plus get it wrong? Uh, clearly, the, the market was focused on that OPEC Plus meeting. The uh, cartel and its partners uh, agreed that the group will continue to curb output, but the, the market clearly didn't didn't take uh, much optimism from that message. I think the OPEC announcement was a clear, uh, you know, buy the rumor, sell the story kind of situation. Um, yes, they have, you know, increased their production cut levels, but keep in mind that across the, uh, you know, a lot of OPEC right now, producers were not hitting their original production targets. And so basically what they've done is pay, you know, implemented a paper cut. And that is that actual production, uh, the gap between actual production and production, you know, that is allowed um, has narrowed. But in, in reality, a lot of these countries are going to continue to, to produce at, at levels that we've seen over the past few months. I think what we need to keep in mind is that maybe later this year, we do start to, to um, push up against those actual production cuts um, in terms of real output, but we're not there right, right now. One other key to keep in mind is it is our expectation that Saudi is going to maintain this production cut through the entirety of 2024. We think Saudi is going to be quite aggressive in trying to keep the market balanced next year. Uh, what about U.S. production? A, a big part of the bull case over the past couple of years on oil was that the U.S. producers had uh, had learned some discipline. They, they understood that uh, dialing up production in an undisciplined way would, would dampen prices. Now, now we're hearing uh, that U.S. production levels are very high again, a, a major source of supply onto, onto global markets. It's been quite the year to watch. We came into 2023. Expectations for were for production growth, you know, around 600 kBD. I mean, we're going to finish out this year at a million uh, barrel per day production gain. That, that's quite a bit of overperformance. Keep in mind that that was driven by a drawdown in drilled but uncompleted wells. That inventory is pretty low now. So I think that it, moving into next year, production growth is going to be a lot less, maybe closer to 300 KBD. It's not going to be the same story from 2023. So it is important to keep that in mind. But I mean, last year, the U.S. producer really outperformed. 
So, Reed, uh, you expect prices to stay pretty stable in the next three to six months. What's your outlook after that, later in 2024 and as we head into 2025? Yeah, I think we could see a reacceleration in prices second half of next year as we start to see central banks begin to cut rates. And that's going to that's gonna help economic growth start to accelerate again, especially across the manufacturing um, sectors. Um, so again, I think that could be a tailwind for prices into 2025. Again, things look uh, a little bit better than they do right now as a number of these economies do start to accelerate, especially across Europe and the United States.